<laughs> yes, that it was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> oh goodness! All right, <laughs> enough about me. All right, so let's look at inverse functions. Uh, you'll find most of this easy, as long as you know what it is that they're asking for. So the very first thing would be um, f, and it looks like f to the negative one, but it's read the inverse of f. So inverse functions are functions that undo each other. So you spent all this time in algebra learning how to solve equations, right? I'm trying to make it unfuzzy. Maybe if I make it slightly bigger. One more. <laughs> nope, one more. Okay, that's not helping at all. Is that just me or is it fuzzy? It's fuzzy. Welcome to my world. <laughs> makes no sense why it won't get clear. All right, one more click. Oh, there it goes. You see how big I have to get it? That's ridiculous. Okay, so functions that undo each other. So if we start with a function three times x, the inverse function of x is x over three. And if you think about it, this is y, and we're gonna do this later on. But if I switch, isn't f of x y? Would you agree? If inverse means switch x and y, and you learned that way back in algebra one, two, three, four years ago. If I switch x and y and I put x here and y in place of the x, right? And then solve this equation for y, what would you get? Once you get this, do you see why that's the inverse function? To find an inverse function, you replace the x and the y, or you switch the x and the y, and then solve for y. So that's how we get the inverse function, but how do you undo multiplication? You divide. And same thing here, I could switch the x and the y here, and I could have x equals y minus 6, and when you solve for y, once you end up adding 6 to both sides, and you get x plus 6. And how do you undo subtraction? You add. Does that make sense? Okay. So then look at just ordered pairs over here. What's the difference between this to this, this to this, this to this? Yeah, the x and the y's have switched, and so you can add that in here. And so what happens is if 4, 7, and 6 are the domain because of the x values, look at what the range is over here, 4, 7, and 6. So over here, the domain becomes the range here, and the range here becomes the domain here. So the domain and the range switch places, which is what this is saying right here. So the domain of f of x equals the range of the inverse function and vice versa. So example one, and you have to pay attention to what they're asking you to do. Example one, you're verifying whether an inverse, you're verifying inverse functions algebraically. There are two different questions that they could ask you. So here's the very first question. Show that the functions are inverses of each other. Well, they haven't told you which one is the inverse of the other one, but it really shouldn't matter. They're saying to you, if this is the inverse of that, or if that's the inverse of this, it won't matter which one you choose to do. I personally, well, it, it won't matter. So let's just say that this is the inverse. Let's say that that right there, the g function, is the inverse of the f function. You could switch it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. So essentially, I've got to show right here that f of the inverse function of x comes out to be x. So f of g is equal to x. All we're doing is fog. So remember all the emphasis that we placed on finding fog and goth? We're going to use that skill here. So I'm going to take the g function, and I'm going to put it into the f function. So for every x, I'm going to put this in. You could reverse it and do it the other way if you want to. It's your choice. But we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to write my f function to big parentheses 
cubed minus 1. And instead of the x and the f function, I'm going to put the g in there. Cube root of x plus 1 over 2. And the reason why I chose to do it this way is it's much easier to cube a cube root. Was that mine? You know, I've lost my phone today, and I don't know where to find it. Oh, there it is. I swear it was missing. <laughs> Bad, Mrs. Murray. All right, so what happens when you cube something that's a, already a cube root? The cube root goes away, right? So I have 2 over 1 times the cube root goes away, and I end up with x plus 1 over 2 minus 1. Don't the 2's cancel? Mm -hmm. And I end up with x plus 1 minus 1. And the plus 1 and minus 1's cancel. And I'm left with x. Did fog or did f of the inverse of x equal x? Did I get x? I got x, right? So is g of x the inverse of f of x? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So your answer down here is yes. That's a g. g of x is the inverse of f of x. And you're specifically looking for it to come out to be x. If it came out to be anything other than x and you did all your math correct, then no, it's not an inverse. Okay. So look at the difference between question A versus question B. So question A is asking, show that those two functions are inverses of each other. Whereas question B is asking, which of the functions is the inverse of f of x equals 5 over x minus 2? Well, there's a couple ways. It'd be a little harder. I mean, technically you could put the x here and the y here and try to solve that equation for y. It's a lot more difficult to solve that equation for y than the ones that I put up there. <coughs> so, can't we do what we just did over here? Let's take, and if these are inverses of that, I ought to be able to put this in for that x there and get x. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to test g of x here. So let's see if f of x is equal to f of g of x. So I'm going to take f of x, and there's my big parentheses, minus 2. I'm going to put in the parentheses g of x, x minus 2 over 5. So use your math. You have to simplify. You're not solving, so it's not like you can get rid of the fact that it's a fraction. There we go. All right, so what's my least common denominator here? Five. So I need to get 2 as something over 5. So don't I have to multiply top and bottom by 5 to get the same denominators? Mm -hmm. So I end up with equals 5 over, this is x minus 2 over 5, minus this is 10 over 5. Now that they have the same denominator, I can combine the numerators. So if I add the opposite, I have a negative 2 and a negative 10. So I have 5 over, moving it up, making it really big and trying to move it isn't so swell. All right, so I have a negative 2 and a negative 10 gives me x minus 12 all over 5. When I have a fraction and a fraction, what do I really do? Take the top right, the numerator, and multiply instead of divide by the reciprocal. So my top is 5, and I'm going to make it 5 over 1. Instead of division, I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to take the reciprocal, the denominator, 5 over x minus 12. Does it look like the 5s are going to cancel out? Mm -hmm. So I end up with 25 over x minus 12. That's as far as I can go with my simplifying. Is that x? Mm -hmm. No. So since it's not x, this is not the inverse.
Okay, so that one didn't work. Question. Okay, I have a question on the first or on A. Can I get back to that? Yeah. So let me answer that after I finish this one. Okay. All right, so that didn't work. So then I'm going to start back at the drawing board. So now I'm going to do f of h of x. Right? So my f of x is still 5 over big parentheses minus 2. My h of x is 5 over x plus 2. This one's actually much nicer. It doesn't matter right here that I don't have like denominators. What can I do with the plus 2 and the minus 2? Yeah, they totally can cancel out. So these cancel away. And I'm left with 5 over 5 over x. Then, same thing as we did before, take the numerator, 5, I'm going to make it into a fraction, so 5 over 1. Instead of dividing, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, x over 5. Now what happens to the 5s? Cancel. Cancel. And I'm left with x. Yay! Isn't that what I'm looking for? So that means that this is the inverse. So h of x is the inverse, not g of x. Yes. Yes, because you're trying to determine if they both might end up being the inverse. Perhaps they've written it so it looks differently, but they're the same equivalent expression. Does that make sense? It is possible that both could be. Thank you. Uh, question yeah. on A. Can I, well, first, can I see the, uh, like the F, or at the top of the page? The very top? Yeah, like where it says. Right up there? Yeah. Okay. And then, okay, so I, like, I did it differently, so I went ahead, but yeah. Um, could you just take F of X equals 2X? to the third minus one and switch them put y equals or x equals yeah i was saying that you it. could you put x here and you put y there yeah, right and then solve it, it for y yes you could, could you, do that, like, on the test you could that however you? that's not the proper way of proving it. Okay. it i don't have a problem with you doing that because you're essentially showing the same thing but what they do want you to do is use fog in order to prove it. Or Goff, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you put this one into there or that one into there. Okay. If they're inverses of each other, you will still get an X. But yeah, um, doing what you did should still get you that answer. And if you can prove, and what I would do, well, I would, I would actually write at the end, since um, when I switched the X and Ys, I got a value of G of X, same value, then they are inverses because that's the inverse. Okay. You just have to be careful that you didn't make your math get you there. Do you see what I'm saying? You know when you check in algebra, you force the check and it really didn't work, but you forced it because you knew you were trying to get you know the right side to be positive 10, so you made the left side be positive 10 even though it mathematically didn't come out that way. You have to be careful there that you don't do that too. Okay, any other questions before we go on? All right, so flip it. All right, so let's look at the graphs of, of the inverse functions. So here, let's just say this is the graph of f of x. It's just the graph of some function, not every function. This is an example of a function. So all it's saying is if, if I switch my a's and my b's, so here's my graph of my regular function. If I switch my a's and my b's, then this is the graph of my inverse function. Notice that they are symmetric to this right here, this line. And that line is y equals x. If I folded this paper right here on this line, made a fold right here on that line. And if you looked at it into the sun, I might be off on my fold a little bit. But can you see how the left side is going over the right side? I must be off on my fold, yes. But this completely lays onto the other one. And so that's what they're saying is that it ends up being symmetric. And so if I show you two different graphs and I say one's the f of x and one's the um, inverse of that function, they ought to be symmetric to y equals x. You ought to be able to fold it and it should, it should not, it should reflect, it shouldn't translate, if that makes any sense. So that's all that that's showing. 
And then if you look at the next graph here, this talks about whether an inverse is one to one. So it says inverse exists only if the original function is a one to one function. And a one to one function means that there is one value of x to one value of y. In other words, look at this. See how this x is 1 and this x is negative 1? Don't they both have the same y? It is a function because it meets the vertical line test, right? But it is not a 1 to 1 function because it has to meet what's called the horizontal line test. If it doesn't meet the horizontal line test, it does not have a 1, the inverse will not even occur. You won't have an inverse. Right? So watch what happens. What would be the inverse of that? So if we tried to find the inverse of this, switch your x and your y. Yeah, switch your x and your y. Let's watch what happens. So this is y and that's x, right? So I'm going to make this x and this y. How do you solve for y? 4 through. Four through. And so if I take the fourth root of both sides, technically I should have plus or minus with the fourth root here, shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. All right, so I get, oh, this is a fourth root here. So I get, can I flip it? Is that right? Y equals plus or minus the fourth root of X, right? So if you were to, so this should be your inverse, right, technically. And technically I should replace this, and we'll talk about that in a minute, with f of negative 1, the inverse of x, is plus or minus the fourth root of x. So plug this into here. You have the fourth root of x to the fourth power. Technically you get x, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right? But you have your plus and minus in there. So let's look at a couple of other functions that are not one to one, and let's see what happens on the next page. It's symmetric to the y-axis, right? But it, what it doesn't do is it does not meet this vertical or vertical this horizontal line test. Horizontal line test is going to tell you if a function is one to one. It's a function, but it's not a one to one function. Let's see how that affects your inverse. Look over here, flip. I've given you um, specific rules. Um, and in fact, let me go grab my calculator real quickly. Determine, because you can have to find the inverse. So I'm going to graph on my calculator just for your sake. I'm going to graph this right here. So I'm going to take 5 minus 3x divided by 2. Let's make sure my window is normal. Nope. So that's the graph of a, what's that a graph of? What's this a graph of? It's a linear, it's a line, right? Look at your x and your y. This would just be y. Aren't x and y both to the first power? Mm -hmm. They're not in a denominator. They're not multiplied to each other. So it should be linear, and it turns out to be linear. Does this meet the horizontal line test? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it only ever touches a line once. Just like the vertical line test, for it to pass a horizontal line test, my horizontal line can only touch it once. So not all linear functions are. Obviously, a horizontal line would not meet it. So. How do you find the inverse? Follow these steps. So I just use the horizontal line test. If it doesn't pass that, you're not going to have a true inverse. So the inverse that we had on the previous page, it has a plus and a minus to it. That right there kills it. So look at number two. So now that we know that it passes that test, in the equation for f of x, replace f of x by y. So here's your very first step. All I'm going to do is replace f of x with y. And this is what Caitlin was doing before. So then follow step number 
Oh, this is step two. Sorry. Then follow step number three. Interchange the roles of x and y. So all I'm going to do is put x in place of y and y in place of x. And then step four. Oh, we have to solve. So how are you going to solve for y? What do you have to do first? Yeah, we have to get y out of the fraction, so multiply this side by 2 and that side by 2. Your 2's cancel, you get 2x is equal to 5 minus 3y. Subtract your 5. You get, and I'm going to go ahead and flip the sides. Negative 3y equals 2x minus 5. Then what? divide by negative 3, or both sides. So we've got y equals 2x minus 5 all over negative 3. Could you have split that into negative 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds? Yes. But nothing says that you have to have it in slope-intercept form, right? All right, what does step 4 say to do? Replace y by the inverse function of x is equal to 2x minus 5 over negative 3. And the last part is to verify that the regular function f and the inverse function are inverses by showing basically fog or goff. Well, they want you to show both. I personally, I would only show one. I guess we could show both of them. But if one works, the other one's going to work too. I usually only do one. So here's step 5. Let's verify. So this is really what I'm looking for, but I'm going to verify it now. So step five, verify. And this is really handy on a test because then you can tell if you really got the right inverse. So I'm going to take my original function f right here, and I'm going to put this inverse into it. So f of the inverse is equal to 5 minus 3, big parentheses, over 2. So that's the original f function. I'm going to put the 2x minus 5 all over negative 3 inside. What happens to the negative 3s? They cancel, and this negative and that negative make a positive, don't they? So you end up with 5 plus 2x minus 5 all over 2. The 5 and the negative 5 cancel. Aren't you left with 2x over 2? Doesn't that give you x? Mm -hmm. Did the verification work? Yeah. Alright, so then you do the other one on your own. So I want you to go through all five steps. I'll put it in the calculator for you. What should this graph look like? What should be its shape? A V? No. 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 Kind of that half of a parabola, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So, on. second function. All right, so here's what it looks like. Square root of 2x minus 3. Does this pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. yeah. Right there, right? So it passes a horizontal line test, so then you can test it to see if it's a function. If it doesn't pass a horizontal line test, if it looked like, well, that still would pass it. If it looked like a parabola going this way, it would work. But if I had a parabola going this way, would it work? No. no. So if it doesn't even pass, function. Or, I'm sorry, an inverse. So you go through the steps.
So how'd you do? Before you verify, look to see what I have. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to take f of the inverse of the function. So when I verify this, I'm going to put this 2 over 1 so that those 2's cancel. I end up with the square root of x squared plus 3. Those cancel. I have the square root of x squared, which is, because it is at, and it verifies. If it doesn't verify, you must have done something wrong, because if it passes the horizontal line test, there's, a funct there's an inverse to that function. So those will tell you number 1. If there is an inverse, and the verification step five tells you whether you got it correct. Yes. Is it always an x? It should always come out to be x. Now, if they use other a and b and whatever, I would switch those variables out for x and y. In the very so, like, let's say here I, you know, I had um, they could use whatever they want to here. They don't have to use f of x. Say f of two a minus. Well, I would immediately use x and y, and that way it will always come out to be x and you won't be confused.